Hey and welcome back to another Dark Vault tutorial. Today we're going to be doing a digital matte painting as you can see in the example here. So the first thing you need to do is go ahead and find some images off the internet and uh, download them. Then bring them into your photo editing software of choice and then just cut them out and piece them together. Then I'm going to save each of these individually, all of them except the background has alpha transparency. So when they bring them into the compositor we can add some smoke, some uh, water and things like that. So once you've saved all your images you can go ahead and open up Blender. So the first thing we should note we're in Cycles Render. We also need to make sure the resolution is the same as the background that we, we created. Also make sure this is at 100% as well. Then we can go ahead and change over from the 3D view to the node editor. So as always we need to choose a scene tab, check use nodes, and backdrop. Now we don't need the render layer so we can press X and delete that. And we want to shift A, go to input, image. Let's just connect this up to the output. Let's also add a viewer node, so shift A, output, viewer. And then go ahead and load up the sky image. So this background image, again I'll throw some links in the description if you want to use the same images that I used. The only thing I did to this was scale it up and then just flip it. I'm also going to uh, desaturate the colours later on as well, but for now that's okay. So let's go ahead and add our uh, floating islands. So Shift A, go to colour, alpha over, drop this in here, connect that up to the viewer node. Shift A, or what we can do is just select this, Shift D and go ahead and open up the uh, the island image. So the way I'm doing this, I've got three different uh, islands. One is going to be further off in the background, and one's going to be in the middle, and another one's going to be quite close. And the way I'm going to add this to the, the node setup, I'm going to add the, um, the third island, the one that's furthest away. You can see this one here. I will add some colour grading or some colour correction to it in a second to make it look uh, as if it's more faded, but for now I'm just going to select this one, shift select this one, and then press shift D. I'm just going to duplicate this, and then let's just reconnect this up. And also make sure this is connected to the composite as well. Also, it's a good time to probably save this in case it crashes, so control S. What I like to do is just create a temporary folder, so I'll just name this temp. Okay, so now we've got this one, we need to change the image. So let's go down here, select this icon. Let's open up the second image. And then same thing for the last one. Just select this, select this, Shift D, connect them up. And then let's change this image. Okay. So you might be able to notice that there's some artifacts going around, that's because we need to convert pre-multiply, so just check these and all of these. You can see those uh, things go away. So there are our three islands, and we're going to add some, um, some water, and maybe a waterfall, and some smoke in the background, maybe a few other th little things. So it's um, things are going to get quite messy up here. So what I will be doing is creating frames, which is just going to tidy things up. You don't have to do this unless you want to, and it might help you uh, find where things are later on, but um, it's very simple to do. So to create a frame, you just select the nodes that you want the frame to be in. So select this one, shift, select this one. Then if we hit control and J, it creates a quick frame. And then let's just rename this. So island back. Let's also increase the label size so we can see it up here. And then let's also give it a color. So now we know this is the island at the back. Do the same for this. Control J. island in the middle. Again things are going to get a bit messy so let's just make some space. There's going to be a hell of a lot of nodes so <laughs> start tidying things up now will help. Can give this the same colour as the island. And this one too. Control J. Increase the label size. Rename it. 
so I'll give it a colour. Okay, so there's our islands. Now, if we want to move things around, it's best to do that now. So let's move this big main one here. I want to move this and make it a little bit bigger. Shift A, distort, transform. Let's just increase the size. Same thing for the middle one, I'll move it down a little bit. So now what we can do is just make them look as if they're fading off into the distance. So, so the island at the back should look the furthest away, so shift A, color, RGB curves. If we drop this on here behind the image, so this is for the island at the back if you kind of see it here. You want to kind of drag this point and just move it up slightly. And the more we do that, the more faded this is going to look. So you don't want to do too much. If you do it a ridiculous amount, it's, yeah, it's going to look strange. But if we do it just a little bit, it looks okay. Plus, we're going to add some uh, fog as well to make this look more further in the distance. But that looks good. Let's do the same for the middle one. Shift A, color, RGB curves. Drop this after the transform. We just drag this, but not as much as the first one we did. Just maybe a bit more. And we also want to add just a little bit to this one too. So Shift A. So island to the front. Shift A. RGB curves. Okay, so now we've got our islands done. What we can do is add some water here. So let's just make some room. I'm just going to move these two over. And we want to add the water on top of these, so that's why we're adding the water here. If we wanted the water to be behind this island, we'd place it here. If we wanted the water to be behind th this island, we'd place it here. Hopefully that kind of makes sense. Okay, so Shift-A, let's go to Colour. Let's add a Mix node. Drop this in here. Also make sure this is connected up to the Viewer node as well. Shift A, input, movie clip. Plug this in. Again, I'll leave a link in the description where you can find this. Okay, so now we want to create a mask. So we need to change this from the node editor to the movie clip editor. And what we can do is select this icon here and select the movie clip we've already loaded in. And then I'm just going to create a very simple mask. So let's change this from tracking to masking. Let's create a new mask. So I'm going to press Control and left click. I'm just going to create a basic shape. Then press Alt C. So once you've done that, you can press A to select everything. Then press V. And then press Automatic. This will kind of give it more of a, a fluid feel to it, but um, I need to fix this. We don't have to worry about this step right now because we're going to come back and refine this. Let's change this back over to the node editor. And now what we can do is we shift A, input, mask. Let's drop this up here. And we select the mask that we just created. Plug this into the factor. But as you play through, you'll notice that the water moves towards the camera. But in fact, we want the water to move sort of in this direction which is not hard to do. If we select this image and plug this into the viewer node, shift A, distort, transform. Let's go plug this back into the uh, viewer node. And what I'm gonna do is, you might be able to watch it here. If I change the angle to 90 degrees, it'll go black. And that's because the, the image has just been flipped like this. And what we need to do is just move it over so that the mask can see it. So let's plug this back into the viewer and just drag this on the X until we start seeing this sky. And some more until we can see the water. So now we've done that, we can close this down so we don't need to worry about moving that one again. What we do need to do is move the this image all the way over there. So the way to do that, we need to shift A, add another transform mode. And we just drop this in right here. 
but we also need to transform the mask because if we move this around well, it's just going to move the image behind it around so let's just duplicate this shift D I'm going to drop this here at the mask now every time we move this on the X here we need to match it with the X here as well so a simple way we can do that is adding in a value node so shift A go to input then value just going to drop this here and whenever we plug this into something we want it to be the same value to begin with so this is zero right now so let's change this back to zero shift D to duplicate this and then let's duplicate it one more time for the scale and as you notice the scale is already at one so let's just set this to one now we can connect this up to the X of both of these nodes this up to the Y and then this one up to the scale so now we have control of both nodes at the same time what you can do as well is we can select this one and this one and this one so hold shift and select all three of these then press ctrl G it'll create a, a super node <laughs> then what we can do is we just select these again and just delete them we have these values now so let's plug this up so we can control them if you've created super nodes like this before or something similar we've done it in previous tutorials um, you already know how to use this but it's very simple once so if we tab back out of this by the way you just tab to go in and out of this now we can control the values we're going to need this later on again so I'm just going to name this so now when we press tab we have this node group we know that this goes into the X this goes into the Y and the scale and we know what they do so that's pretty simple now we can move this water over well, it's not pretty simple it is a bit complicated to set this up but once you know what you're doing um, it is, becomes easier so now if we uh, move this over left and right up and down looks okay Okay, make sure to save it so now we can clean up this mask what we can do press N to get rid of this if we open up another window like so select this and change this to the movie clip editor and then we just press T and then N to get rid of those and now we can actually refine this mask and make it look a lot better so it's not too bad if we zoom out as well it's just it looks okay if we right click here and then just join this back together okay so what we do need to do as well is if you zoom in again you can see it's quite sharp but we need to add a blur so let's add a blur here shift a filter blur let's just drop this in I'm going to blur this maybe 8 or 9 again from this distance it doesn't look too great but from where the camera will see it uh, it doesn't look too bad so what we can do as well is change the color but since we don't know what the color of the waterfall is yet I'm going to add the node and then come back and change it later so if you want to add your node now we can do it here before this transform shift A hue saturation value just drop that in here okay so nothing's changed yet since we've not changed the value so let's just tidy this up press A to deselect everything then press B I'm going to uh, select all of these add a new frame so now we have this water we need to add a, a waterfall so that can be the next thing we add and again this is going to be pretty much exactly the same way except maybe one or two little things different but it's very very simple to do shift A color mix just drop this in here shift A input movie clip and I'm going to go ahead and open up another movie clip so now we need to create another mask so I'll jump back over to the movie clip editor and then we can change this video footage so down here select the other movie clip and then let's create a whole new mask
and then just pick uh, a stream I guess I think I'm going to use this one if I hold control and left click I'm just going to block in kind of a shape and then alt C to close it then once you're happy with the basic shape again press A press V automatic again you might need to play around with these go back to the node editor right, shift A input mask select the waterfall plug that in and we have some weird uh, waterfall just flowing there so let's um so as we did before we need to transform this but again we need to add another transform node for this one too so shift a distort transform drop it in here press shift d let's make some room and instead of creating that uh, node that we did before we can just select this and we can either press Control c to copy it or if you want you can select it and then press this icon here which will copy it and then this one which will paste it now you can press G and just move it out of the way we want to move it over here make sure you don't plug it into anything or make sure you don't drop it onto anything I should say now you can plug in the X oh yeah well, we need to make sure this is uh, zeroed out again because otherwise it will move this can stay at 7 Plug this into the Y, this into the scale. Okay. So now let's again move this into position. Let's, uh, if you want, you can zoom into the backdrop. Let's scale this down. Something like that. Now I'm going to just drop it down. so it doesn't look too good now since it just stops there what you can do is just feather this out and it just make it go into nothing or you can keep it going and drop it into well down into the ground I guess so that's what I'm gonna do so the way I can do that is just right after these transform nodes I'm gonna add another node shift A go to distort scale drop this one here shift D this one here and again we don't need a whole new node for this we can just shift A go to input value let's drop this in here so set this back to one just for now and then plug this into the Y of both of these nodes now if as we increase this this will stretch down but also stretch up a little bit as well so we need to reposition it so keep that in mind so go as far as you want to I'm going to go off the screen that's pretty good come back here to your node that you created let's zoom in again so we can see and just drop this down it's too much that's not bad okay so as you can see it's very jaggedy so <laughs> it's uh, jaggedy is that word it's very sharp and needs uh, feathering so up here where your mask is you guessed it add in a blur shift a filter blur drop this in I'm gonna give this quite a high amount so let's go with maybe 20 doesn't look too bad let's zoom out as well looks okay another thing you can do is make it uh, make it transparent so if you can see right now it's not really transparent if we shift a add in a converter color ramp we just want to drop this in here where our mask is going into the factor then what we can do is if we select this white color then select the white color and just drop it down a bit we'll see that this becomes transparent and the more we reduce this color the more transparent it's, it's going to be now we can fix the colors uh, first let's make this into a frame right here if we shift a color hue saturation value drop this in here now we can sort of match these two uh, the two water features so let's zoom in again and let's start with the water pool here so what I'm going to do is just reduce this hue so 
I'm going to hold shift as I drag this slider just to slow it down a bit, give me more control. That's not too bad. I also want to drop the value as well, make it darker. That looks okay for now. And let's do the same for this um, this blue here. For this one, I think we're going to have to... Let's just drag this down a bit so I can see it. So for this, let's just drag the hue down a bit. And then let's increase the saturation. And make it darker a little bit. It's not too bad. Okay, so that's the water. Now let's add some atmospheric smoke. So as I mentioned before, uh, we need to know where to add the smoke. So I'm going to add the smoke almost to the background. So behind this building, or behind this floating island, and behind this one too. And then I'm going to add another smoke element just to add, to go in front of all these, just to tie it all in. So let's start by adding the uh, the rear smoke. So I want this to be here's the background and here's that rear island. I just want it to be over the top of this, but behind these two. So I'm going to add in add it in here between these two. If that makes sense. Hopefully I'm explaining things properly. If not, uh, I apologize. Just ask in the comments if I don't explain things too clearly. So yeah, apologies for that. <laughs> So shift A, let's add in a colour. So we're going to add in a mix node. Let's drop this in here. Shift A. Input movie clip. And this movie clip I'm using, I got from Action VFX. It's one of the free smoke elements. Again, I'll leave a link in the description, but definitely go check it out. It's um, very high quality. But they have uh, loads of different smoke elements, which is awesome and free to use. So definitely go check that out. So let's just open this up. So this is a smoke element, and all I did was just slow things down. But for now, let's just um, scale things up and move things around. So Shift A, add in a distort transform node, and this is going to be a big overall um, atmospheric look to the back, big cloudy look. So let's just scale this way up, maybe about three. And that's quite big and then we need to move things back up so so since we scaled things up quite drastically it's, it looks grainy so let's fix that by shift a filter blur let's drop this in here and again blur this about maybe eight or nine or maybe more if you want it to have a softer cloud look then what we can do is if we change this from mix to screen, since we just want to get rid of the black, it looks okay apart from the color. So let's fix the color. Shift A. What we could do is convert it to black and white. And then Shift A. Maybe add a color balance. And then just pick your colors that you want. So now we've got this. We could actually duplicate this. So. B, select all of this. If we shift T, just move it down here for now. And then let's tidy this back up. So press A to make sure you don't have anything selected. And press B, select these again. Control J, make a frame. I mean, you pretty much get the idea now. So now we want to add this fog layer to everything. So let's just grab these again. Press A, press B, press G, move this over. Again, we want to make sure the fog is in front of the in front of the islands, the water, and everything else. So that's why we're adding it here. What we can do is just select this and plug this into the empty slot here. Connect this up to the viewer node and the composite node. So now let's just added the same uh, effect on top. So we want to just reduce these values for now. Let's set this back to zero set this back to one so now let's increase this again or maybe two two oh, by the way if you have the node wrangler add-on enabled you can just hold control shift and then left click on any node and it will preview that step of the node so just in case you're wondering why I did that now for this one we want to change the colors so I just want to make this a darker blue and I want to make this brighter. Looks pretty.
pretty good. So another thing we can do to uh, blend things in, make sure, make these uh, sort of fade out or make these transparent. So let's go over to the let's <laughs> zoom out. But first, again, let's make sure we tidy things up. Press B, select these, Control J, label. So now let's blend these in, which is pretty simple to do. First, we need to create a, another node. So let's just change this to the, to the texture panel. Choose the world icon. Then we can create new. And we also want to make sure we check use nodes. So we've used these nodes before creating a gradient, and that's exactly what we're doing. Um, if we select this one, and press X to delete it, Shift A, go to textures, and add in a blend. Depending on what version of Blender you're using, it might be called something different, um, but for me it's called blend. Plug this in here, then we just want to change it to vertical. So I want to change this to quadratic. Again, you don't have to, it's up to you. It's personal preference, um, but that looks good for now. So let's change back to the scene tab. So now what I can do by using the, uh, by using that gradient, if we go to the island at the front, I shift A, go to input, texture, and I'm just going to drop this in here, and then move it over, and then we can plug this color into the factor, and we also want to make sure we select the gradient texture as well. So you can kind of see what's happening, we need to move it around, so we want the lower half to be transparent, so what we can do, if we select the offset, I just want to move this around maybe maybe about that much. Let's see how it looks. That looks okay. This one we're going to give it a little bit. We're going to do the same thing, but just give it some more. So let's just uh, let's copy this node again. By you can either press Control and C to copy it, and then Control V to paste it, or we can just press this button and then paste it again. Press G. And I want to do the same for this middle island here, so let's just bring this in here. Plug this into the factor. But for this one, we can change the offset. So let's see how much it affects here. So it just adds a little bit more depth, I guess, to the images. It looks better that it's more faded in, especially with the smoke as well, it ties it all in. So probably the last thing I'm going to add to this is maybe a boat. Um, so what I did was download a boat video and just uh, sort of masked it out. So again, I'll leave a link in the description for you if you want to use this too. Um, but for this one, I want to put this layer in between the fog, behind this fog. So let's move this over. Shift A, color alpha over. Let's drop this in here. Shift A. Uh, this one, I believe, is an image sequence. But again, you can use a movie or image sequence, it's up to you. Move this over here, plug this in. Oh. Again, we need to check convert pre-multiply, just to get rid of the nastiness around the edges. So as we can see this boat, if we play through, it just moves a little bit over to the right. But instead, I want to move this, I want to scale this down and make it uh, move over to the left. So if we shift A, Distort, transform. We also want to flip this, so Shift A, distort, flip. I'm just going to put this in here. Now it's going to move on this direction. So this is a video, so the things, the sails move a little bit, and it's also bobs up and down slightly. But if you want to use an image, again, you can use that and just animate the uh, the transform. That's pretty much, you know, it would probably would be easier. Again, let's tidy things up. And probably the last thing I'm going to do before color grading is maybe add like a bloom effect. I'm just going to move these over. So Shift A, go to color, then mix. Drop this in again. And then what I'm going to do is take the feed and just plug this in here. Then Shift A, go to filter, sunbeams. And I'm going to plug this one onto the bottom string. And then we'll see what happens. What we need to do first before we see anything is increase the, the ray length. So I'm just going to increase it, say 0.3 for now. Then I kind of want to move this up. So I'm going to 0.6, maybe 0.7. So these rays sort of come down a bit. Maybe 0.6. So now if we shift A, color RGB curves, 
drop this on here. I'm going to make an S curve just to boost the brightness and darkness of this. Okay, I'm kind of happy with that. So let's select this mix and change the blending mode. I'm going to change this to screen and have this overblown sort of bloom effect. Now obviously that's far too bright unless that's what you're going for. Um, what we need to do is just drop this factor down. So I'm going to drop it down maybe like this. Let's see how it looks. So now you can go ahead and add some more things uh, and make it look unique. So again, if you make some cool map painting, go ahead and upload it to our Facebook group. It's always great to see what you guys are making. Um, now I'm just going to add a quick color grade. So this part is more subjective to how I want it to look. You can have it to look however you want. When you're happy with it, you can go ahead and render this out now. So let's go to the render panel, change this to FFmpeg video. You want to change the encoding here, choose a preset. I'm going to choose the preset H.264 in MP4 format. Then I want to go ahead and choose where I want to save this to. And then go ahead and hit animation. So hopefully you enjoyed this. I know it's a very long tutorial, um, but it's quite a few steps involved. Um, but hopefully you enjoyed it. I mean, I enjoyed making it. I think it looks pretty good. If you did, be sure to give it a like. Um, and as always, thanks for watching.